Can we later still sort from yesterday? All right. So, yeah. okay. well, good morning, Lee Doody. We're rec I'm recording you now. Uh, yes. How are you? Uh, well, first of all, what a week you've had. Yeah, it's been a, a crazy week already. You can tell you that. Unbelievable week. So I just I do a quick intro. Um, first of all, I'm record I'm recording this and it's in my own kitchen, um, and I've been doing it since the beginning of lockdown. And I was doing all sorts of different people from TV celebrities to very ordinary people with very extraordinary kind of stories and just lovely ordinary people. But actually, you are probably the highest achiever we've had on since day one. I don't know how many of them I've done. Maybe fifty or sixty of them, and you've got the most unbelievable news. So. I know you quite well, and I've been working with you for some years now, so I'm going to hand over to you just to tell us what your week was like and why you're on with me today. So, tell yeah, me. So, um, yeah, so, like, I'm Lee, and I've been living in Finglas my whole life, and then the last week has been great, anxious, nervous, a mess, a ball, it's been everything wrapped in a full week. Um, I just got my leaving suit results on Monday. And at night, I probably got about an hour and a half of sleep. And it was just so anxious. But then when we opened them and I seen the points, and I got me points for the course I wanted, I just forgot about it. I didn't even care about them, because all I cared about was Friday to get me um, acceptance for the courses. And then luckily, I got my first choice which is in DCU, and has to do teaching in secondary level. Or, just, uh, stop there just for a second, because just yeah. to put this into context, you are the first person in your family, am I right, to say, yeah. to college. Yeah. So you're completely breaking that cycle as such. Your mommy must be jumping up and down with excitement. She is, yeah. Because she's... She's, uh, she's absolutely delighted. Yeah. Uh, as, I, as I am. She was more excited than I was when I... I opened it on Friday and seen that I got my first choice. <laughs> what does it, it was uh, to a bit be, of a mess. What a was the like first person in your family to ever go to college? Well, that was huge to me. Like even when I was applying for loads of things, like um, like let's say halfway in sixth year, and you'd apply for PLC as a backup, or you apply for different foundations as a backup. That would be one of my main starters. Is one of the reasons, one of the main reasons I want to go to college is to motivate myself because. My mom has six kids, and I'd be the only one to go, and that'd be huge for me. And that's just that was huge for me. I had that, I had that on every interview I had. I brought it up everywhere because it meant so much, and that is one hundred percent a joy for me that I've had since fourth year going to school. As in sixth class, didn't like school at all. As soon as I hit fourth year, went and I absolutely loved it. It was different. Ball game. It wasn't. I didn't even see it as a skill. It was just a daily routine. I'd never miss a day. I probably missed three days in the last three or four days in the last six years. Six years, and just days I had to miss. Probably one of them being sick. I never really get sick. <laughs> and then, uh, oh, stop! Like, uh, Lee, do, you think, do you think your mom and dad had a big influence on, like? On, on you going to, on your on the way you are I mean you're so dr serious about it you're so driven you're so and yet like from where you're living so, there's not that many people have gone to college before and like so is, do you think it's to do with the household do you think it's to do with school supports do you what what do you think made you that person that decided to break smash down that barrier and go to college well I'd say it's half and half like um for me the, one of the reasons I didn't even know what I wanted to do up until the start of sixth year, which is normal for lots of people. But I'd say I always knew I wanted to go to college, just didn't know what I wanted to do. And then in, let's say, fourth, fifth year, sixth year, my mom would always push me to go to do college, to, to do something good, to have a good job, to do good, just not have any regrets. Saying, oh, I should have done that little extra study to go to college instead of sitting around doing nothing. So my mom always pushed me and she said she never minded what I, what I was doing as long as I done something. I wasn't just hacking and doing nothing. And she'd always have that ringing in my head. And then what my dad would do is, my dad from a young age would push me to do sports, push me hard, which I'm chills for now. 
You're so lucky. Yeah, and all your, I mean, what, you've done 10 marathons or something mental like well, I've that? Done, I've, done, I've done one marathon and I've the next one coming up next month, Dublin Virtual Marathon. And then I've done eight half marathons. Eight half marathons, okay, brilliant. And, um, in school, I do every single sport competition. It wouldn't be me if it wasn't. It wouldn't be a sport competition if I wasn't there. They wouldn't even have to ask me to sign me up because I do know what I'm going to say yes. Lee, tell me, tell me about the challenges in your own teenager life growing up. Like, because it's not easy to be, I don't mean swatty and serious and bookish and all that. It just, it's not easy for any kid to be that person that's kind of striving to be, you know, mm. higher than, than most kind of. You know, and you've been so serious and so dedicated to that. Tell me about the challenges in your own life growing up as a teenager. Uh, what have you seen in your own yeah, teenage so years? What I've what I seen from a young age was um, maybe like three or four or five years ago was everyone where I live kind of goes through they all start drinking doing just not right stuff like 14 and 15 and I never understood that I never got that like I, like I never drank I don't drink I've never drank in my life now I've woken up for the last two years but I've never drank in my life um, like don't get how like 90 percent of people here have the exact same like daily routine you do the same thing every day and it's just like drinking all that is incorporated into it and it's just it just baffles me and i always like thought of myself in a toward way as if i was like stepping back and looking into my life or looking into someone's life and thinking okay well where's that drinking off when i get you well it just costs a lot of money and then it's just no good then but I just, I always thought, I didn't care you what anyone thought about me. Tell me about drugs. What about drugs? Is there much, I don't see it ever around because it's probably my age, I don't know. Is, is there much drugs around? Around here, see it every second day. You'll, maybe you'll walk past someone and you'll smell something or you'll walk, just walk, walk past and you'll see someone just... It is around, and anyone that lives around here, no matter what the age, knows what they are and knows what they look like. Like there's ten-year-olds, ten-year-olds are younger that go around talking about. Like um, yeah, it is. It's it's a normal word where we live. It's not. It's not like a prohibited word. Or it's everywhere around here. But, um, okay, so t tell me this, when you went to, when you stepped out of your own area and you went to the Gale Talk when you were in fourth year, was it fourth year? You yeah. went to fifth year. So when you went to the Gale Talk, tell, talk to me about that. Tell me how different you felt, because I know you absolutely felt like a fish out of water in the first few days. It was your mm. first time to kind of mingle in a situation like that. Tell me what mm. that was like for you, just from your own self-confidence point of view. In the beginning, at the in the early days of the Gale Talk, that was very difficult. If I'm honest, like me, I'm a very hyper, like I can contain the hyper now, but um, I'm very hyper, talkative, move, do stuff kind of person. But like, um, thrown in to a place like the Gale Talk, where there's a couple of hundred people all speaking Irish, even if so they say they have a small bit of Irish, I'm like a guarantee I'm smaller, like um. I always liked Irish. I never had a problem with Irish. I was just never really good at it. I always usually stuck to, um, I put more effort into other subjects. As I never thought I would really use it. And then Irish going into fifth year was the only subject I was doing ordinary. And then at that point, I was thinking, well, well I had to uh, make a life decision what I'm going to do in college or if I'm going to go to college. And uh, one of the big things was the influences that had on me, which was huge. Going to some of my favourite classes, which was all of them. I loved every single class. It was just, uh, especially like two or three classes that I'd literally sit in and be jaw dropped about information that I just soak in so quick. I just was sitting here. I was amazed at your uh, reaction um, to, I was amazed at your reaction to the different people all over. Like you didn't have friends in Donegal and Kerry and all these places before you went to the Gale Talk. And that mm. came back, that struck me that suddenly it, oh, it, it's like it opened a door to you in something that you didn't even realise it was going to open a door to. I am um, like the first week, it was two weeks in the Gale Talk. And the first week, first five, six days was just really hard. I'd speak maybe three words in a day and that would be 
sorry, I have small Irish and it's nice to meet you and I'm from Dublin. That's what I'd say in Irish. And then they'd walk away and then that's it. But then um, the start of the second week, I knew, well, I'm here for another week. So I'd stay up for about another two or three hours while everyone was asleep. I'd pretend I'm asleep. I'd go on my phone. Thank God I didn't take it off me. And then um, I'd literally be on Irish apps or Google Translate writing down words that are good conversation starters and then just pushing myself into it. And that kind of forced me into I should have done that from week one, but I knew I couldn't go on the week while being silent. It's just not like me. I, I sit in there just being quiet. And it's just it's just a different person. Like, because like, the second week, I kind of spread it out. People were like, who is he? Because he always thought I was just a quiet person in the corner, but that is literally the opposite of me. But yeah, like, every night for like two or three hours, I literally sit there on my phone and a piece of paper writing down words in English and Irish and only saying them in Irish and um, from that it would kind of grow and grow and in a week's time when you're just around by Irish you can be surprised how much you would learned and it was just flat out and then that, that second week was absolutely unbelievable I had probably one of the best times of my life in that second week I met probably every single person in the place over a week and it's a couple of hundred people it's like re reintroducing myself because the first time I introduced myself, I couldn't speak. <laughs> Second time I introduced myself, I, I said that I couldn't speak much Irish and I've gotten a little bit uh, motivated to keep learning that. Because the whole point in going to the Irish school was to get better Irish, to do a higher level Irish because I wanted to be a, a primary school teacher. Yeah. And, it, uh, and then um, it ended up turning that I'm going to be a secondary school teacher now. Okay. But um, it was still that second week was it didn't it, of course we didn't even bother me when we finished because the second week was so good it was absolutely amazing. Hey, do you think that do you, you've been going to a desh school and um, do you think that desh uh, teachers should have a different training to normal teachers? Not at all. I don't know. I, I'm not sure. I don't think so. Like okay. it depends on different teachers to be honest like um, every teacher has a different attitude and you most likely 100% of the time to be honest in our school uh, the attitude has been amazed like there's yeah. not one teacher that would that would like, annoy me but like but uh, no I for me just from my experience I didn't have any problems and I loved every teacher 100% well that I think well, that's a really lovely thing to, to say, Kalosh to own, obviously, and things will be thrilled with you. But I mean, and you're, I, I, it's totally true because you have been such a, I mean, you've been such a good, an unbelievable student. Um, like, so I'm not surprised you've had such a positive experience in the school, you know, you, because you've been an outstanding student. Mm -hmm. But I, I think the change, for me, after I saw you come back from the Gale Talks, I really felt that I thought, my God, you really thought this is it. I am now going for this. If it's going to kill me, I'm going to get it. And you really did kill yourself to get there. You know, really, be, I think you really did kill yourself to get there because, and I suppose things then like getting a laptop and getting extra help and getting all that kind of stuff does make a difference too. Do you know? Because you got opportunities like that other kids, you put your hand out and took the opportunities, which I think made a huge difference too. Do you know what I mean? You knew that you had to do stuff like that. Oh, hundred percent. Um, every day I went into school, it was like things to get out of. I knew what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to do teaching, and I knew right away. I looked at what I needed and who it was teaching. And the fourth place I looked at was Manus, because most of the teachers in my school that I've talked about with them I went to Manus, and he said it was amazing, and he said you fit right in. So I looked at that straight away. I found that they have a course in teaching. But I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to do it unless I done a PLC because it required a third language, which I didn't do. Because yeah. in our school, the split is history and Spanish. So if you do history, you don't do Spanish. Okay. That means you don't do a third language. But then I found out DCU does the same course, but it's actually better. It saves, it's a le it's less. In Maynooth, it's a four-year course into a two-year course. And then that two-year course is the master's. And that qualifies you for teaching. But in DCU, it's a four-year course and the teaching is built in with it. So after the four-year course, you're fully qualified to teach okay. two subjects, which is much more ideal. Right. And um, 
Did you find, did you find, Lee, did this, because I know you went out with, I, obviously you're involved in the Rising Tide, which I'm involved in. Did you find the scholarship made a difference, the Rising Tide scholarship? Did it make a difference to your steps of stairs that were getting you where you wanted to go? I wouldn't say I'd be here. Ha, chuffed with life right now. Got me points, got me course without the Rising Tide. A thousand percent. Not even close, I wouldn't say. Um, just the things the Rising Tide would do was just crazy. Like we, uh, at the first year of it, it was like, fill out an application and you might be part of the Rising Tide. This will be a program to help uh, students from this school help their goals in further education. We'll give you a grind, we'll give you this, that. And um, everyone in the class and the school was like, this is another project that that's gonna fail and that was gonna happen. <laughs> but we joined but we but we joined it and it happened. Then like a week in, we were like, So what do you want to be? And I was like, I haven't a clue. But then that was one of the how I found out what I wanted to be was through life coaching that the rise the rising tide gave. And then they'd be like, Hey, you wanna do this? Are you positive? And I'm like, a million percent wanna do. And then once I said that to them, it was literally, Okay, what do you need? I was like, Yeah, I need higher in this, higher in that. Uh, H2 and this, H2 and that. And then they were like, hey, we'll get you the grinds straight away. And then we got like grinds every year in the Institute of Education, which was mad money now. And they, the Rising Tide. Um, no, I know how much it was. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was crazy. And we knew how much it was. Like. And then, um, and then we knew like, it was proper. And this is like a bit crazy what we're getting. And we go to the places like the Gale Talks. I got there because of the Rising Tide and the Institute. And we talk to people from there. And they're like, my uncle paid 900 quid to get me here. And I'm like, <laughs> still paid for me to get me here. And um, it was a bit crazy. Like, they'd be like, Jesus, you must go to a really nice school. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I do. But it's just not the school you think it is. But um, like, the school was brilliant. And the Rising Tide program is huge. Huge, huge, just for things like that. Like at the end of the year, when I said I'm a history teacher mainly, um, the Rising Tide uh, got me the grinds to do history every week instead of twice a year in the Institute. It was every week. And that was mental money now. But um, <laughs> that was unreal. Like that was a lot better. Like in an hour of learning, I felt like I learned about a week's worth of history. It was mental. Because everyone is, that was also one of the four in a classroom where everyone wants to learn a hundred percent. Yeah. Usually you get a bit of talk. High achievers. It, yeah. Usually you get a bit of talk in the background or something and it just sets you off. Teacher, the teacher has to tell the person to relax and try and concentrate. But in this class, the teacher's just gone and you just have to keep up with them. And if you do, you learn so much. You know, Lee, I, I wasn't really, I, I mean, obviously we're running the rising tide and, and you're, an, you're absolutely an ambassador for us. And no more than all of the children are, are the students that came through this year. I mean, the results have been like, we're just over the moment with the results. And I think it's fantastic for Collage to own and the teaching staff who have been really have been so unbelievably supportive of us as well. Like we were allowed to come into the school and we were allowed get our claws in kind of, which was fantastic because if we, it, it's an unusual situation to have people like us in a school like yours, do you know what I mean? So really it's a whole, what it really is, is a lovely jigsaw. Like it's us, it's your teachers, it's your, um, your positivity, your dreams, Laura Duddy, your mother, you know, I mean, I don't know your dad that well, but your mom is like an extraordinary person. And, and then you you also had the ability to actually the brains to sit down and do it, but really for you it was such hard work, and I really admire that. The effort you put in, Lee, was just extraordinary. And I worried about your times because you looked so stressed out. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God, your stress levels were off the scale at times. Worrying about the, even with the pandemic coming up, not being in school, missing all your classes, all that kind of stuff had you so worried. So when we heard, I actually saw, I saw the uh, pandemic as an advantage. I saw it as a complete win, in my opinion. We got told, okay, you're going to be at home for the next couple of months. You're going to have to study at home. But um, at that point, I finished every single textbook in the school. So every course has been finished for the Leaving Cert. So 
all it was was flat out study, go over it again and go over it again. But I saw that as a complete win because I seen myself by myself doing it, waking up early, and there's no person talking in the background. It's getting three or four hours going to study and then moving on to another subject and moving on to another two subjects and doing like five, six hours a day or maybe three or four days a week. And then it was just, I, I saw it as a complete win. For me, it was. Yeah, it were completely worked in your favor. Lee, tell me this. Can I just ask you just while I have you on now, just about and I know how good your school is and I know the teaching staff are brilliant. Um obviously because we're working beside them for quite some time now. Bullying and racism, I got just want to ask you about because I'm always fascinated by this. How, like do, I know you have a fantastic policy in Colosh Don to try and combat bullying all the time. Do you see much of it like in the streets, not even in school, in the streets in Finglas? Do you see much of it around? Is it very obvious all the time? No more than, and, and I'll ask you the same question about racism. Do you see that sort of stuff going on all the time? I'd say with bullying, at this age now, like I'm 18, I'm 18 now, and you'd see like 12, 13, 14 year olds like six or seven of them in a group, and you'd see like, it's all the same, it's literally the same. There's like 40 different groups of like 14 year olds walking around, like, and one of them just does something completely ludicrous, just because you think it's funny, or you think it's just like, throw a stone at someone, or like, set a beam on fire. Like if that happened around here, it'd be like, oh, that happened again. Get a new, new one of them. Cause it's just, it's just normal. And playing around here, say, it's hard to say. That's um, a lot of people like stick to their own groups, and it happens. It doesn't happen without people knowing. Like, it happens with people. Like, if someone gets left out in a group, or like. People, t- people think like there's a lot of weird feelings around Finglas because one time like you'll go out with a group and the next day you want to ask you to come out and then you're thinking in your own head in your own room locked in a dark room like well, why didn't they let me go out is there something wrong with me and it just there's a lot of like uh, weird thoughts around Finglas and it's 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 very difficult to have like um happy thoughts about something so simple because it kind of plays with your head you're out with a couple of... You know what? I don't think that's just around Finglas. I think that's like Dalkey, Sandy Mount, Clantarf. I think that's kids everywhere. Do yeah. you think social media has a lot to play with that? Do you think... 100%. Jesus. Like, um, even with just like brands, brands is a huge thing in Finglas. Like, if a new career runners come out, the first person to get them is like, Jesus, like... It's mental. They kind of feel like they need to get them, which is crazy. You're nobody but, yeah. wearing brands. Yeah, it's it's. If you look back from it and look look at people doing it, it's like you're trying to impress people. But like that's that was the kind of thing I never I never understood. I don't get why you want to impress someone that doesn't mean a thing to you. And um, it's like trying to get a hierarchy of people that have the best brands, the best things. Okay. And it's just, it's just so meaningless because in a couple of years' time, when you finish school, it's not going to mean anything. anything. It's, it's it's crazy. Like and I always thought of looking looking at things from a tour perspective, like jumping outside of myself and looking at myself, and thinking, well, if I did that, like nowadays, if you walk up to someone and you wore the best jacket, the best trousers, the best shirt, you would think like. Oh, they're not a very nice person. We don't even know them. You'd see them in a very nice jacket, a very nice jumper, a nice pair of shoes, and a really nice pair of runners. And you'd think, well, that person is brutal. They must be really unintelligent and just uh, impress people. But that's that's like, I do that sometimes. If I if I walk down the road and see someone like that, you do people. Yeah, and it is crazy. I I I've done that many times walking mm-hmm. around things. Mm-hmm. It is crazy when you think about it. It's like, I'm not thinking he's a bad person or not intelligent because if he's wearing a jacket and it makes no sense. Mm-hmm. But if you're walking around with your mates and you are wearing like a penny sticker or something, mm-hmm. it ripped off you and you'd get slagged and you'd never, in two years' time, you'd be like, you'd see someone that you haven't seen and you're like, oh yeah, you're the fella that used to wear the bad jackets and all. Like it's, 
ridiculous. Years, years. Ridiculous, isn't it? Like, it's not like, oh, he's wearing a bad jacket, take it off. He took it off and never wore it again. It's never heard of. Because, like, it's just like everyone's trying to impress each other. It's like yeah. telling a joke or something. If there's like seven, seven lads. It's really weird because, I mean, when I was growing up, we didn't have that at all. But then our parents didn't have money to be, you know, really. But we didn't have that. That pressure wasn't there. But then kids weren't watching the Kardashians and Kanye talking about the latest this and that and all the new Nike runners that are hundreds of pounds. Like, we didn't have that at all. So I, it's an awful pressure. I don't know how you solve that other than try and talk to the, young, the younger children coming on. And Lee, really... You're such an ambassador for us and for your school. Um, we really should rope you into being a mentor uh, to younger children. We should, we should make you do it, whether you want it or not. But I mean, because really, Lee, you're such an ambassador for hard work, discipline. I know, like, you are, you're not unique. There's loads of kids like you up there. It's just that I knew you, you didn't mind chatting to me today. Like, there are loads of really great kids up there, great students. But really, we should rope you into being an ambassador for us because, you know, you've broken so many barriers. You're really headed for, I mean, to get over 400, to get over 400 points, like it's just, it's, a, it's an amazing result. You know, considering the amount of challenges that are in, that have been in your teenage years and you could have gone down so many of the wrong paths, you know? Yeah. Like you're amazing. But uh, like, even if, that I didn't even go to school. I still don't think I would like drink or smoke because I always, I know people that drink and smoke and that puts me off it. I'd um, see that and if I didn't have the rise and tide, it was 100% a huge uh, advantage. But I always did have the drive to do something and to go to college. You did. If I would have gone. Yeah, and I do, like, for us, you were, you were an open door and all we did was give it a gentle push. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was just, like, you weren't, we weren't pushing a closed door. With you, we were pushing an open, and we, pu we push plenty of closed doors where kids aren't ready to make the jump or make the move, you know. But with you, and I do, th I, you know, I do think really a lot of it comes from home. Like, as I say, knowing your mommy, I mean, even over the period of time of you, and um, doing so well in school your mom went back to work mm. you know she took that big jump she hadn't got the confidence in the beginning then suddenly she was working and then she was in a job where we ended up um we couldn't do without her then when her time came at the end of the job she's so fabulous you yeah. know so you had all that positivity and all that positive energy coming from home which really does make a difference lee doesn't it 100 percent. like um Seeing my ma work, like she's on, she was on a thieves game. So there was like, let's say three people in the kitchen and they were all getting paid the same amount. And my ma is a proper worker. Like, um, she he, really is. Like, like she would, she'd get paid less to work because my brother, he's 30 now and she was his girl. He's a hemophiliac. He would get more money for not working. Just couldn't stand it. Being at home 24 seven, waking up at nine, trying to clean a house that's already spotless. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just no. cleaning. But Lee, she was unbelievable well. talent. She could run her own bakery. She could have oh, a shop, shop. She could be. I mean, I've never seen anybody make turn out cakes like her. So she has all that positive drive herself, which obviously was. She was pouring it all over you all the time as well. So I'm not going to go on too much about all this because if this goes on too long, it's just we can't post it. And I'm just we're so proud for you um, and of your achievements and. Um, I do think it's not just the rising tide or your school or your mom. I think, I mean, obviously it's coming from home, but I think it's, it, it's, you're in the middle there and you were the magic and all the bits just were around you to make that happen. I think all the really good things. And um, when I saw you going up to collect a bike at one stage, because you hadn't missed a day at school, um, you won an award for that. Am I right? You won yeah. a bike. And I kind of thought, there's so few kids can say they haven't missed a day at school. So you've That was uh, an odd one, because the year before, I thought I was going to win that, because I didn't miss a day the year before as well. <laughs> the, the person that won, because the whole point of it is attendance. It's strictly attendance. Yeah. It doesn't matter how smart you are, how well you do, it's attendance. So if you, whoever meets, misses the least amount yeah. in the three years, I was four seconds toward four fifty six gets the bike and the per I never missed a day. And the person that won it 
missed like five days. <gasps> I went up to the principal and I was like, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought, I said, I don't mind that I didn't win. I just want to see like the parameters of how you know, this person was picked. And they said, well, you won it last year. I was like, no, I didn't. <laughs> they thought I, I um, already won like a bike from last year. And I said, that definitely wasn't me. I don't know how that happened, but um, oh my god! Well, anyway, the day I you, you got your bike for a hundred percent of attendance, and I just thought you were fantastic to get that. Well, I like, I missed maybe three or four days in the six years, and I missed it. Like one of the like a couple of reasons I had to miss. Like I was in Portugal on the Sunday going the marathon, and I literally couldn't get back in time. I got back at like. Like 2 a.m., 3 a.m. in the morning. But I went to school the next morning on Tuesday morning. I got like three hours sleep, but I was chuffed. Like I went down. Sorry, and, uh, sorry, this year, a lot, I think somebody told me you were, or it was you, I'm sure, you were knocked down on your way to school. I'm not laughing, but you were knocked down on your way to school and you went on to school or something. Was that you, Lee? It was you, I think. Were you, did you fall off your bike or you had an accident on your bike? Oh, I haven't. One of the times, two or like, yeah, yeah, one time my chain fell off my bike because I have a fixed gear bike and uh, the chain fell off my bike and wrapped around the way when I would have handled my but I just got up and laughed like, because like, I'm and you came on the Like, I just, I, I see that as a talking point, I see that as a, <laughs> as a conversation starter because I got up and had like scrapes on my arms and legs, but I had like a full wool jumper on and I got over that. <laughs> and slacks like it was like an action suit to be honest like i wasn't like wearing shorts and a t-shirt okay so I got up, I laughed. Laughed. everyone just looked at me the car stopped and was like you all right i was like i think so yes i'm actually crying but um well lee can i just say you already look like a school teacher you have the look about you honest to god you have the look about you i think you're going to go so far uh, so you're going to use is, are, do you feel nervous about going to dcu Oh, um, university. Do you feel nervous about going in on day one? Not at all. Okay, good for I you. I just wanted to start because yeah. I'm minimum hours sitting at Friday at two p.m. A half, a half one now at uh, one thirty. The results aren't out for thirty minutes. I got a text saying from the CEO saying you received an offer from DC 9 and that's the course. And I was like, what? I was like, I was, I was going mental, but um. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna be the bike. Okay. One second, one second. Okay, that's okay. I have one as well, unfortunately. <laughs> Actually, I'll do exactly the same. Go on, Gooch. Okay, <laughs> let my own dog out. Yeah, I have a little Jack Russell, and she hears, the, she hears a horse going past. We live on a main road, like, and she hears a horse going past. That's <laughs> the end. You'll hear her scream there at the back. So you, but, um, got, you got your results, you got the course you wanted. Yeah, also, um, yeah, at two o'clock, we were sitting down, me and my mom came back from Tesco, because we were just getting in the shop, like, and we were sitting down, soaking wet in my jacket, and she's like, take your jacket off, I was like, no, I can't, I can just see what I got. And it said the course, and it said it accepted a client, and I accepted it, because I knew that was my number one choice. And I accepted it, and it said, it sent me an email, saying the following institution will send you registration form soon. So I got in, but for the next 20 minutes, I was like, but did I get in? And I was second guessing myself, but I was like, well, I accepted it. And I, they're gonna send me registration form soon, so I definitely got in. But I was like, I was wait, I didn't know what was gonna come up. But yeah, I, I, I was baffled for the first 15 minutes, thinking, okay, I accepted it. And I got an email saying that registration form's gonna get sent out soon, and congratulations. So I was like, yeah, I'm in. And then I was like, okay, I'm in. And then all the stress from like the last three years just kind of eased away. But um, <laughs> Fantastically. Well, I can just say for anybody that, that uh, sponsors the Rising Tide, they, they would look at you and go, well, now there's, there's money well spent. I mean, any investment Lee, we made with you with trips or all the stuff we did and your laptops and all the rest of it, like, my God, you know, you, as I say, you're an ambassador for us. And I'm definitely... I definitely think we should be looking at you, holding on to you. We're not letting you go just because you're over 18 now. You needn't think you're going to leg it. Um, because I think really we should bring you back in to talk to the younger ones and because you're a perfect role model for kids. Discipline, hard work, you put the head down 
and there was so much like crap in your life you know what i mean other stuff around your world that you could have easily been drawn into other all sorts of you know stuff and i just uh, so admire the fact you kept your head down um so mr duddy is yeah, mr duddy that's what they're going to call you those those students imagine you're going to walk into a classroom imagine that and that class are going to look at you and say mr duddy good morning mr duddy you're oh, amazing. It sounds, it sounds weird, but uh, I'm excited. I can't wait. You're amazing. I just can't wait to start because um, it's going to be very interesting to put the head in again because over the last couple of months, like, I haven't lifted a pen or unless I'm in work. Like. Don't worry. Don't worry. But, uh, no, I'm, I'm actually excited to get back into it. To get it's the same thing we through. can do when you're in college to help. You know where we are anyway. You know, we don't actually have any kind of a program for, for after uh, school age, but to be honest, with someone like you, um, if you needed help anywhere along the way, we'd be absolutely thrilled to do whatever we need to do because it, you've got to be that teacher. It's as simple as that now. There's no, there's no question marks over that now. You have to be Mr. Duddy. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Can't wait. So listen, congratulations. We're thrilled, 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 thrilled for you. You're a fantastic ambassador, as are so many of them. It's just I knew you'd be willing to talk because they were, they're not all talkers. Um, so listen, thanks a million for taking the time today and huge congratulations from us on your success and the best of luck in Dublin City University. Thanks very much. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. literally over the moon. I can't wait to start. Thanks a million, Lee, and say hi to your mum. I will, of course. Okie dokie. Bye. Thanks. Bye. -bye. Thank <laughs> you.